welcome back in this lecture we will look at an important approach to study the electrochemical double layer capacitors this approach involves analyzing the impedance of the electrochemical double layer capacitor we have looked at this important technique of electrochemical impedance spectroscopy in two brief lectures um please look at these two lectures before proceeding with this lecture this lecture provides a general introduction and the simplest circuit representation for an electrode electrolyte interface is called a randall circuit how to obtain the electrochemical impedance of a randall circuit is given in this lecture and there is an additional third lecture uh, on involving transport uh, which is not too relevant for understanding the material presented in this lecture but it is important that you have a good appreciation of these two lectures before moving on in this lecture so this is the randall circuit which is the simplest circuit that is useful for representing the electrode electrolyte interface we have a working electrode here we have a counter electrode because of the capacitance of the electrode electrolyte interface there is a capacitor the electron transfer between the electrode electrolyte interface will have a resistance that is indicated by this resistor the ion movement in the electrolyte will have resistance that is indicated by this resistance because of the presence of a capacitor we need the notion of impedance to represent this entire circuit if you only had resistances we don't need an impedance uh, but because there is capacitance you do need impedance in this technique what you do is that you perturb the system the way to perturb the system, electrochemical system is you apply a signal let's say a small um sine wave variation of a potential with respect to that this consequently would change the concentration of the reduced species oxidized species and all this variation would lead to a current response so this is uh, a general way of thinking about electrochemical impedance spectroscopy um so what we are interested is in as a function of this perturbation that is the variation of potential at a particular frequency what is the current response that is what we are interested so this is a general way of studying any system right you perturb you make a small perturbation and then you measure its response so because this is an electrochemical system the perturbation is in the form of potential variation and the response is in the form of current variation so the entire experiment for example is often represented by this data representation along the x axis you plot the resistance along the y axis you plot the imaginary part of impedance what do you vary you vary let's say the frequency so this is a perturbation the frequency of this perturbation is modified so let us physically think through this uh, all these things are elaborated in this just some giving a preview of what you would hear in these two lectures when the frequency is very high all the current will pass through the capacitor short circuiting this so this is um at um 
very high frequencies. So the system will not even see this resistance. All the current will go through this. That is why this is R omega. At omega equal to zero, it is the entire DC. So there would no current, there would be no current across this capacitor. The this system will see both R omega and RF. So as omega is zero, you this quantity will be R omega plus RF. All these issues are elaborated here. So please look at that before moving on. Okay, let's come back to electrochemical double layer capacitors. In the previous lecture, we had derived this partial differential equation, which is just like the fixed second law PDE. We are not going to solve. How do you go about looking at the impedance response? We mentioned that we change this potential, right? This potential variation is implemented in this PDE. From that, you can obtain the current response. So we are not, this, this can be mathematically involved. So we are not going to be looking at the solution procedure, but in some previous lectures, we have given pointers on how you can obtain the current response. All we are going to state is give the formula for the impedance, which is, of course, a function of omega, and then look at the, its implication for electrochemical double layer capacitors. So this omega can be non-dimensionalized. We looked at why this quantity has the unit of time. Once this has the unit of, um, uh, uh, that is, um, I mean, the inverse of this quantity as a unit of time. So this as a unit of frequency. So you can use this quantity to non-dimensionalize frequency. With that, you get this particular quantity. Let us just utilize um, these equations, plot it and interpret it. So this plot is called the Nyquist plot. That is, the real part of impedance is along the x-axis, and the imaginary part of impedance is along the y-axis. What are we plotting? We are plotting curves for three different capacitors, capacitor, I mean, EDLC electrodes of three different thickness, 25 microns, 50 microns, and 100 microns. We will look at this a bit later. This is the conductivity in the electrolyte within the porous electrode, area per unit volume, double layer capacitor, and the cross-sectional area. As a function of all these things, we once you get all these things, this is known, and we are plotting the curves here for three different thicknesses. What do we see? This has to be interpreted using the circuit, the general circuit for a porous electrode. In a porous electrode, there is a resistance for ionic movement in the electrolyte, resistance for the electron movement in the electronic conductor. There is the double layer capacitor and resistance for charge transfer across the electrode electrolyte interface within the porous electrode. As a first approximation, this conductivity, that is the electronic conductivity, um, is much larger than the ionic conductivity. So as a first approximation, we assume this to be zero. And in a simple electrochemical double layer capacitor, there is no Faraday reaction. This can also be zero. So all we have are these resistors and these capacitors. What is an important quantity is the capacitance of a porous electrochemical double layer capacitor electrode. Uh, that is obtained when omega tends to zero. This is the overall capacitance of the electrode. This is an important quantity. This is a very practical quantity, which um, 
you would be interested in obtaining. That is, given the thickness cross-sectional area, what is the overall capacitance of the electrode? Let us also keep in mind how we had non-dimensionalized uh, omega star because a particular omega is very important. What is that particular omega? That is what you mean by omega cutoff. Let's see why this is important. As you increase the frequency, as the frequency increases, let's say it tends to infinity or a very high value. What is happening? The current does not, the current in a capacitor does not percolate inside the capacitor, right? So you have a capacitor of a finite thickness. If the frequency is very high, there is, cannot be potential variation. That is the potential variation cannot be transmitted across the porous electrode. Hence, the entire current is in a very small region, right? Because um, for the current, for the ionic current to get transmitted, there should be potential variation. But if the frequency is very high, uh, the potential variation is not favorable for ionic current to get through the porous electrode. So as the frequency increases more and more, the entire current is only in a very small region. That is the reason why this resistance, that is the real part of the impedance, also goes to zero. And the, the impedance due to capacitor is also goes to zero. Because most of the porous electrode is not utilized at very high frequency. So if you want to utilize the entire width of the porous electrode, you have to have frequencies which are less than this particular frequency. So this quantity is very important. Uh, if you are uh, more uh, than this particular cutoff, you are in this region. Okay, so see the cutoff frequency is dependent upon L. So for three different thicknesses, as L increases, the cutoff um, L is in the denominator. As L increases, the cutoff frequency also uh, changes. It becomes lesser. That consequence you will see in the next slide. Um, all we have to notice, the cutoff frequency for three different electrodes of three different thicknesses are different. If you are within the cut, below the cutoff frequency, you are utilizing greater part of the porous electrode. And if you are more than the cutoff frequency, as the frequency increases, more than the cutoff frequency, you are using lesser and lesser of the porous electrode. As in the limit of high frequency, no, none of the porous electrode is being utilized. In the limit of zero frequency, all of the porous electrode is being utilized. So for optimal design, you want to be having omega less than the cutoff frequency. And because the cutoff frequency is given by this particular quantity. Let us look at the meaning of the cutoff frequency. If the cutoff frequency is very high, intuitively, um, from these uh, curves, all of the porous electrode is utilized. Let's, that is, the current is felt across the entire porous electrode. Let's see whether that makes sense. If the cutoff frequency is to be increased, you need to increase the conductivity of the electrolyte, which makes sense, which would make it easier for the ions to flow through the electrolyte within the porous media. If L is very small, the cutoff frequency is increased and all of the electrode is used, which makes sense because if you have a thin electrode, it's easy to um, utilize the entire electrode. If the area per unit volume is uh, decreased, 
again, you can increase the cutoff frequency and the same logic applies for uh, double layer capacitor. So we have discussed this kind of argument when we looked at uh, modeling porous electrode within the double layer uh, capacitor. So in the previous lecture, please look at that too. Uh, we um, thought through in terms of current across the electrode from potential distribution. This is uh, this in this slide we are looking at how to utilize the entire uh, porous electrode to obtain maximum capacitance. In the earlier lecture on Randall circuit, we had looked at the electrochemical impedance. Make sure you understand that before looking at this particular slide. So the impedance is given by this formula. And we have also derived the impedance for a capacitor in this lecture. And that is the formula here. So this is called the Bode plot. On the y-axis, we have the capacitance. On the x-axis, uh, we have omega. As discussed in the previous electrode, the cutoff frequency is a quantity dependent on L. As L changes, that is, as L increases, the cutoff frequency decreases. That is why this portion is different for three different um, uh, thicknesses. So what we observe is that as the frequency becomes greater, only very small part of the capacitor is used. The entire length of the porous electrode, is it, it does not utilize. Therefore, the capacitance decreases. At a put it at the frequency less than the cutoff frequency, you are utilizing the entire um, porous electrode. Therefore, you are, are having higher capacitance. So connecting to the formula for the entire um, capacitance of the porous electrode, you can understand this variation too. As the length of or the thickness of the porous electrode increases, your capacitance also increases. So qualitatively, um, this curve is important to, uh, to be understood. So what is that we are showing? We are discussing the change in the imaginary part of impedance for three different frequencies. This corresponds to the cutoff frequency. You are at, let's say, a third of the cutoff frequency. If you're at third of the cutoff frequency, you are in this region, right? Where, wherein you are utilizing the entire width of the porous electrode. Therefore, you have greater capacitance. As opposed to this, if you are less than below this point, that is, if you are at a higher frequency, what happens is that only a part of the porous electrode is utilized. Therefore, the capacitance is lesser. So, what we have not discussed here is the equivalent distributed resistance. So, what we mean by that is when the entire porous electrode is being utilized, the resistance across the entire porous electrode will be felt, right? So that is what um, for different thicknesses, you will have uh, different uh, resistances. Therefore, the equivalent distributed resistance is connected with the, the general circuit for a porous electrode. The resistance 
is distributed across the entire porous electrode. So as if you're below the cutoff frequency, you're utilizing the entire porous electrode and you are feeling the, the that is the ionic movement is feeling the entire resistance of the porous electrode. So as the thickness increases, the equivalent distributed resistance also increases. So for this thickness, this is the equivalent uh, distributed resistance. For uh, thickness corresponding to 50 micron, this will be the EDR. And for thickness corresponding to 100 micron, this will be the EDR. So what is the implication for this analysis for real system? For this simple model uh, that is containing just the resistance in the electrolyte and the CDL overestimates the resistance at higher frequency. And therefore, it under, underestimates the maximum power. What do we mean by this statement will be clear if we look at the data presented in this slide. In this simple model, independent of the frequency, whether you are above the cutoff frequency or that is in this region or below the cutoff frequency with this frequency, this resistance is assumed to be a constant, right? When this is assumed to be a constant, this is not indicative of the real system. In a real system, as you are more than the cutoff frequency, your resistance also decreases. As opposed to this behavior, here we are having the same resistance for whether we are having the frequency um, more than the cutoff frequency or less than the cutoff frequency. Because of this feature, this simple model overestimates resistance at high frequency. Therefore, you underestimate power. But it's a good model for lower frequency because in this region, this simple model compares well with the behavior of this system. This is a more accurate representation of the system. This is a simplistic uh, representation of a system. In this re region, that is when you are lower than the cutoff frequency, um, the simpler system compares well with the this system. But when you are more than, when you are at frequencies greater than that of, than the cutoff frequency, in reality, only a, only a part of the porous electrode is used. Therefore, your resistance decreases, but that change is not presented in this data. Therefore, it's a good model for lower frequency. In the next lecture, we would assume that the solid resistance, there is a f finite solid resistance, uh, because in this model, in, in the entire analysis, we assume this to be zero, that will, uh, that need not necessarily be zero. And we will relax this assumption and look at the solution. And we will also look at how a full cell with two electrodes, how do we think about that in the context of electrochemical double layer capacitance? Thank you.